Good evening and welcome to Just the News. I'm Faye D'Souza. Thank you for joining us. Let's get straight to the news from today. Now, in an odd development in the standoff between the Assam and Mizoram government, the Assamese government yesterday issued an unusual travel advisory to the citizens of the state, advising people not to travel to Mizoram, citing a threat to personal safety. Assam's advisory say, states, and I quote, Given the critical prevailing situation, the people of Assam are advised not to travel to Mizoram as any threat to personal safety of the people cannot be accepted. It also advised the people of Assam who live in Mizoram for work to exercise utmost caution. The advisory went on to say, even after this incident, certain Mizo civil society, students and youth organizations are constantly issuing provocative statements against the state of Assam and its people. It has reliably learned from video footage available with the Assam police that many civilians are heavily armed with automatic weapons. In view of the above, for the purpose of ensuring safety and security, a travel advisory is issued to the people of Assam. End quote. This is from the Assamese government. In Mizoram, the Home Secretary, Lalbaik Sangi, wrote a letter to the Centre's additional secretary in charge of the Northeast and said that armed personnel of the Assam Police are moving into areas which are along the interstate border. This comes after six policemen of Assam died and 80 others, including officials, were injured on Monday when the police of the two states fired allegedly across the border at each other for the first time ever in the history of our country. Officials from both sides, including chief ministers, have accused the other of provoking the violence. Pulitzer Prize winning photojournalist Danish Siddiqui was not simply killed in the crossfire in Afghanistan, as was widely reported. But a report published in a US-based magazine on Thursday said that he was brutally murdered by the Taliban after verifying his identity. According to the Washington Examiner report, Siddiqui was traveling with the Afghan National Army team to the Spin Boldak region to cover fighting between the Afghan forces at the, and the Taliban at a very crucial border crossing with Pakistan. Now, when they were about, according to this magazine report, when they were about one third of a mile from that post, the Taliban attack split the team. The commander and a few men were separated from Siddiqui who remained with three troops, Afghan troops. During this assault, Shrapnel hit Siddiqui, so he and his team went to a local mosque for first aid. As word spread that there was a journalist in that mosque, the Taliban attacked specifically. The report went on to say a local investigation suggests that the Taliban attacked the mosque only because Siddiqui was present in it, which means he was singled out and he was executed. Siddiqui was on assignment in Afghanistan for Reuters covering clashes when he died. In Goa, after facing flak for the statement that the Goa chief minister made on the gang rape incident, the chief minister, Pramod Savant, has now said his statements were taken out of context, adding that the safety of minors has to be shared, has to be a shared responsibility. He has also said that the accused in the case would be given the most stringent punishment under the law. Now, this is about one particular case. Four men dressed as policemen in Goa raped two 14-year-old girls after beating up the boys who were with them on Balalum Beach on Sunday. All the accused have been arrested. Mr. Savant, who is the Chief Minister and the Home Minister of Goa, made a statement saying that it was the parents' responsibility for letting these 14-year-olds go to the beach late at night. Here's an update from Parliament. The government has introduced two key bills in Lok Sabha in the middle of protests by opposition. While one of the bill is aimed at disinvestment of the insurance sector, the other one is aimed at fighting pollution in the national capital region of Delhi. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman tabled the General Insurance Business Amendment Bill 2021. It's widely seen as a move to privatize state-run insurance companies, following the Finance Minister's budget announcement of the same earlier this year. The bill was moved. As the bill was moved, uh, one of the MPs from the opposition's Revolutionary Socialist Party opposed the tabling, saying the House is not in order because of protests from the opposition. He said, I strongly oppose this bill since the bill is meant to privatize, uh, privatize insurance. The second bill that was also tabled was the Commission for Air Quality Management in the National Capital Region and Adjoining Areas Bill 2021. If passed, this will see the creation of a statutory panel to monitor and mitigate pollution 
in the greater Delhi area for the first time. Also, uh, the Union Minister for Women and Child Development, Smriti Irani, uh, answering a question in Rajya Sabha, said that there are over 9 lakh, so 900,000 children with severe malnutrition in India as of November 30th last year. These children range between the ages of 6 months and 6 years old. In response to another question on whether the incidence of malnourishment among children has increased, Ms. Irani said, and I quote, a, as reported under the National Family Health Survey 5, the nutritional status has improved in many states despite the short interval of four years between survey records. Now, I just want to put on record here that the National Family Health Survey 5, which is a regular survey conducted in India across the country to measure various things like malnourishment, women's health, education, that sort of thing. Its initial first phase report came out in December last year. The second phase report has not come out yet. But according to the first phase report, 16 out of 22 states showed an increase in the number of underweight and severely wasted children under the age of five now wasted which means that the weight doesn't match the height of the child so the child is severely malnourished uh, also 13 states out of the 22 states registered a sharp increase in the percentage of stunted children under the age of five so basically chronic malnutrition and stunting among children below the age of five has not improved at all Acute malnourishment and wasting has actually worsened in the last five years, according to that latest round of the National Family Health Survey, phase one. Phase two is not out yet. Yet, somehow, the minister has made a statement saying many states have shown an improvement. Of course, she hasn't included the number of states in that statement that she put out. The Prime Minister on Thursday launched the SUFL or the Structured Assessment for analyzing learning uh, or and the AI for all joint initiative in collaboration with CBSE. Now, this is part of the many announcements he made in the education sector. SAFAL is a competency-based assessment for classes 3, 5 and 8 introduced by CBSE. It will be used to assess progress of foundational skills, basic learning outcomes, competencies among students. So instead of rote examinations, this is a more sophisticated way to measure how much children have learned. On the other hand, AI for All aims to create basic understanding of artificial intelligence of every citizen in this country. The program is again driven by the CBSC under the Ministry of Education and Intel India. All of this is fantastic. In the meantime, there are reports coming in though from rural India that show that many, many thousands and thousands of children across our country in the primary and the secondary school stage of education are completely cut off now for over one full fun academic year because they don't have access to the internet and they don't have access to smartphone devices. So they're not learning online. In fact, most of these reports now suggest that these children run the risk of illiteracy because they've been out of school for so long that they've now begun working in the fields. COVID updates right now from across the country. India reported 44,230 new COVID cases and 555 deaths in the last 24 hours. This is an increase from yesterday. Remember, yesterday it was 43,000. Today it is 44,000. Um, let's look at states specifically. Kerala has reported more than 20,000 new cases every day for the last four days, four straight days in a row. Uh, Karnataka on Thursday saw a bump up of 34% in new cases. So Wednesday, Karnataka reported 1,500 cases. On Thursday, it reported 2,052 cases. And today it has reported 1,890 new cases. Karnataka's new Chief Minister Baswaraj Bommai today said that there is a need to tighten state's borders and suggested compulsory testing to check the spread of the disease in the state. Maharashtra's Health Minister Rajesh Topi announced that COVID restrictions in 25 districts of the state of Maharashtra will be lifted. Relaxations would be given for the functioning of shops, theatres, cinema halls and gyms. However, there would be restrictions on wedding functions. This comes after the state reported a decline in the number of COVID cases. Maharashtra reported 7,242 COVID cases in the last 24 hours. Bengal has extended its COVID restrictions until the 15th of August. Taxis and auto rickshaws have been permitted to operate at 50% capacity. The government and private offices will also function with half the manpower. Bengal, West Bengal has reported 766 COVID cases. 
Let's take a look now at news coming in from across the world. Israel has become the first nation in the world to offer a third COVID vaccine booster shot for everyone above the age of 60. Citizens who've received their second vaccination at least five months ago will now be eligible for a booster shot. This comes after there were reports that there was a decline in the body's immunity to fight COVID after receiving two shots of vaccine. 57% of Israel's population are fully vaccinated. In worrying news now from Africa, a UNICEF team has now managed to reach areas of Tigray in northern Ethiopia, which were not accessible for several months because of armed conflict. And they are now doing a survey on the health of women and children there. The survey results have been shocking. According to UNICEF, 1 lakh 100,000 children in Tigray, a region in northern Ethiopia, suffer from life-threatening, severe, acute malnutrition. This is a 10x or a 10-fold increase from the average annual caseload that they normally get. Another shocking revelation is almost 47% of all the pregnant and breastfeeding women are acutely malnourished, which means that they will uh, face pregnancy-related complications and have higher risks of maternal death. This comes because Tigray's food, health, nutrition, water supply and sanitation systems are hampered because of armed conflict. Well, here's an update from the world of science and technology. In an astounding video that NASA shared today of a coronal mass ejection erupting from the sun's surface, sharing the video, uh, NASA wrote, and I quote, our view of the solar system, one star, but what an awesome star. This image of our sun shows a coronal mass ejection or a CME erupting from its surface. These waves of solar plasma shoot billions of particles uh, into space about a million miles per hour. Of course, this particular CME did not head towards Earth. Let's take a look at the world of sports right now, specifically India's campaign at the Olympics in Tokyo. India's 23-year-old boxer Lovina Borgohain has assured herself a medal at the Tokyo Olympics by advancing to the semi-finals of the women's 69 kg category. Ms. Lovina defeated the Chinese contender at the quarterfinals today. She is set to secure India's second medal at the Olympics. PV Sindhu has advanced now even further, sealed a 2-0 win against her, Japanese, against her Japanese counterpart and advanced to the semi-finals of the Tokyo Olympics. The next match will be held tomorrow where she will play the Chinese contender. India's men's hockey team registered a 5-3 win over Japan to enter its quarterfinal spot with a second place in Pool A of the Olympics. Australia is at the number one spot in that group. The Indian women's hockey team, Navneet Kaur, a 57th minute goal helped the team defeat Ireland 1-0 to register their first win in Pool A at the Tokyo Olympics. India is currently placed fifth in Pool A with one match remaining against South Africa. Top four teams will advance to the next round. World number one archer Deepika Kumari of India crashed out of the Tokyo Olympics after losing her women's individual quarterfinal to South Korea's Ansan. Deepika Kumari had earlier been eliminated from the mixed team archery event along with Praveen Jadav. India's fastest female sprinter Duti Chand finished 45th overall out of 54 athletes in the 100 meter heats at the Tokyo Olympics. The 25 year old will now take part in the women's 200 meter heats on the 2nd of August. Indian boxer uh, Simranjit Kaur has been knocked out of the Tokyo Olympics. The 26-year-old lost her round of the 16 uh, bout to Thailand's contender 0-5. This was Simranjit Kaur's Olympic debut. And an update from the world of cricket very quickly after Team India all-rounder Krunal Pandya, Chahal and Gautam tested positive for COVID in Sri Lanka. Chahal and Gautam were among Krunal's eight close contacts who missed the last two T20s uh, while they were in isolation. And a piece of oddly positive news before we uh, leave you for today. Mercedes has announced that it will launch electric variants in all its segments. It said its customers will all have access to electric alternatives of every model that the company currently makes by 2025. It will also launch three new electric vehicles in 2020. 25. In its statement, it says the company has put more money into research and development. In total, investments into battery electric vehicles between 2022 and 2030 will amount to 40 billion 
euros. So that's good news because it's more cars. Not, it's oddly good news because it doesn't mean these are cars that all of us can afford. And that's really when we'll start to make a dent in carbon emissions. They need to be more affordable electric cars and more charging stations across the country. That brings us to the end of uh, this edition of Just the News. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, for listening and thank you so much for tuning in. It is our pleasure to bring you the news on a daily basis. Do leave a word of encouragement for my team that does all the hard work behind this. Uh, in fact, I will introduce them to you one of these days very quickly. Leave us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this bulletin. Thank you for watching.